It's a wonderful pleasure to kick off DLD with an interview with Iyad Madish, who is the CEO and founder of ResearchGate. Um, and I suspect there are quite a few people here who aren't familiar with ResearchGate, and you'll be glad that you are about to remedy that. Um, what it, it also is a, is a wonderful opportunity to start off because DLD being a German company's you know, conference business that's very globally minded, um, ResearchGate is located in Berlin, but it was financed in the US, and as Iyad will explain, he's a German citizen, but he's of Syrian ha ancestry, uh, and it was only because he was able to spend time in the US that he really got the opportunity to have the insights and then the financing to create a research gate. So what we're gonna talk about in, uh, we don't have any time we're going, so that's good. Uh, but I think we have a relatively limited amount of time, but I uh, hope not, that the three things, we'll talk about research gate, what it is, where it's come from and where it's going. We're gonna talk a little bit about the culture of German technology and innovation as compared to what we are more familiar with over here and how they're, what the respective strengths are and, and why he's sort of been able to take advantage of both. And then we're gonna talk about what I think is even the most exciting part of the ResearchGate story, which is how is the fundamental process of scientific progress becoming accelerated because of tools like what he has conceived and invented. And, and as you'll see, uh, ResearchGate is uniquely sort of putting the process of scientific advancement on steroids. So quickly define what ResearchGate is, Iyad. So, um, hi. Uh, ResearchGate is a social network for scientists in which all science, uh, scientists in the world can share and discover research information. Um, and it was built out of the need that I, when I was doing research, you know, most of the research you do in your lab is failed experiments. So experiments where you're not succeeding or you're not finding something out which you want to find out. And I was frustrated that I'm doing mistakes or doing things which other scientists in the world already have done. And this is a lot of waste of time and money and this is what we wanted to change. You yourself as a scientist. Yeah, he's a yes. medical doctor, I should have said. He's a medical doctor who was getting into medical research on uh, HIV, uh, something you particularly were excited about working on because you felt there was so much need, and it was your own research that kind of got you realizing there was an opportunity to do it way more efficiently, right? That was kind of, that was what happened when you were in the States. Yes. Give the quick chronology now. Okay. okay. <laughs> so I started studying in Germany, got a scholarship in the US, went to Boston, doing research in Harvard for a couple of years, then decided you know, moving back to Germany, while I was in the US, the idea came up while I was doing research, hey, there has to be a social network for science because all the progress we do, uh, and especially in our whole society, is really depending heavily on what, what's happening in science. So I was really, I said, okay, let's build that up. But I moved back to Germany because I thought, okay, I want to do that from Germany. So I went to Hanover, working as a medical doctor. I needed money, so working as a doctor. On the other side, I tried to build up ResearchGate, but after two months, I noticed, okay, doing both, it's just impossible. So I went to my former, you know, former um, uh, boss, Professor Manz, um, went to him and I said, hey, I would like to have only half position as a medical doctor, the other half I would like to work on ResearchGate. And I explained what ResearchGate is and he started yelling at me and said, hey, scientist, and social, you're not going to change this. Um, get this bird shit out of your head. Uh, you're 27, almost professor, why are you throwing away your career? Um, so I quit my job on that evening <laughs> <laughs> and called my professor in Harvard and I said, okay, Rajiv, this is the idea and this is what I want to build. I think this can change the world and I want to do that. Can you give me half position at the MGH in Boston? I do research and on the other half I do research games. Mass General Hospital. Mass General Hospital, yes. Um, so he gave me the position. He, he even invested money. So he even gave me the first 100,000 um, you know, to pay my service, which was very important, right? Um, so I moved back to the U.S. and I start building up ResearchGate in Boston. And then, in, yeah, then I start meeting investors, right? You need at one point money. And then I met, in summer of 2010, Matt Kohler and all the... Who's been to DLD several times. Yes. Um, and all the investors before, they always asked me, how do you want to make money with this? And I said, you know, making money with ResearchGate is not so hard. Much harder is to convince scientists to use a network of science where they share information in real time and in a transparent way with everyone in the world. That's the much harder part. So I left a couple of times the room of investors asking me very early, how do you want to make money with this? Because I thought this is not the right person to work with. 
But Matt Kohler asked me in the first couple of slides, what's your goal with ResearchGate? And I said to him, you know, I, win to, I want to win the Nobel Prize. Um, and he said to me, well, that's an <laughs> interesting goal. Um, that's I want good, to, I'm telling you. And I want to invest. And this is how we then, he invested in the Series A. Benchmark, which benchmark, is where he is, right? Benchmark invested this year in the Series A. We moved back to Germany. First startup, I think, moving back from the US with money <laughs> to Germany, Berlin. Um, and building it up from there. A year later, um, Peter T with Founders Fund invested, and just a year and a half ago, Bill Gates invested into our company. Uh, it's a pers personal investment, so we got very strong investors. And that's uh, a pretty that's strong group. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the guys. That, so, and, and, and you've in your most recent round, you raised 35 million. I guess that's a public figure, and you didn't yeah. say how much you'd raised before that. But uh, having Matt and Peter and, and Bill Gates, obviously, uh, that's a good trio of supporters. But talk about ResearchGate, how big is it now? And wait, wait, first of all, you have to be an accredited academic researcher to be a part of it, right? Academic or corporate researcher. Okay. Both. Uh, and how many people are currently registered on the service? I think we're just jumping right now over 7 million regi registered scientists. 7 million registered Users. scientists who yes. are professional researchers all yep. on one platform that yep. you're operating. That's yes. a pretty big number. Yes. And that number's been growing quite rapidly. Right? Yes, so the last million we got within three months and the million before within five months. So it's growing very fast. And especially you can see that if you look how many publications and data and raw data sets the scientists are uploading, uh, which enables then again new discovery. Within the first 50 months of ResearchGate, it took, like in the first 50 months, it took all the scientists in the network um, to upload two million publications into the system. And now every four weeks, two million publications are getting uploaded. So every four weeks, you get what you got the first 50 months. And it's yes. now how old? Uh, mid of 2008, we started. But so full time working on it, to the beginning of 2011. Just about seven years since you got started. And, but, but so talk about what actually happens there. Because you, know, you and I were talking um, in prepping for this about the historical way that scientific research is done. Somebody does a study, then it's peer reviewed, then it's published in a scientific publication, Nature or what the sciences. What do you think of that model and how does it work instead on your system? Yeah, so I think the model is a model which is now 100 years old. Um, especially if you think about printed material, right? Um, you reviewed articles, you carry it information from A to B, but science really didn't really change. Even the World Wide Web is now existing. Um, so how it works nowadays, you have an article, and one big problem I see is that you always publish only the positive results. And positive in science is 2 to 5% from my own experience. The other 95% is, we call it negative ex data or, negat or failed experiments. But every result is a result. And if we would put it in a bigger picture, we would have been much much, uh, we would have much more progress in, in all the kind of different diseases and all the research we're looking at. But because we're just publishing the sweet spot, because we think, ah, this positive result, that's so important, let's just publish this part, this is a huge problem. And then the next problem is that the review, which is then in a magazine, there are a lot of political things which are happening, also the time, how long it takes until an article is reviewed. All these things are not really well designed for science, to happen quick and fast, and getting reviews from scientists in a network, as we have, um, in a transparent way. And this transparency in science is a very important part, because most of the science, as you maybe know, is funded by us, by our tax money. Uh, but the transparency is not available. We cannot just access every scientific article in the world because we want to. And I think all these things we have to change. We have to change how we share data, how we distribute the data, and how we make this data accessible and understandable for the whole world, not just for scientists. So in, 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 in the ResearchGate model, the same paper that somebody might have waited to have peer-reviewed and fine-tuned and then finally get accepted and wait a few months for the magazine to yeah. finally come out, they just put it up right away. Yes, exactly. I think this peer review, if you think about this post-publishing or pre-publishing peer review, right? before you publish, it's getting peer-reviewed. Why? Right? Um, just recently, like a year and a half ago, there was a study published in Nature from uh, a Japanese group and a Harvard group, which demonstrated that they can make stem cells out of normal cells with a very simple procedure. It was a huge breakthrough. It was everywhere in the press. Three, four weeks later, after it was published in Nature, on ResearchGate, a discussion came up saying, I cannot reproduce those results. 
Long story, data was uploaded on ResearchGate, which proved that the data was not right and they were made up. Um, they completely fabricated. Yes, completely fabricated. Published in Nature. Published in Nature, fabricated. exactly, published in Nature. So it shows a, a general problem of the peer review. If you read an article in Science, without reproducing it, it's impossible to say if this article is really right or wrong. It's just impossible to say. So you have to reproduce it. So I envision a future where you publish, first of all, not a whole article, always publish the small elements you just created. You sit in your lab, you do an experiment, you have a result, just publish it. Um, and Even then if it's not a complete result in the historical sense. It, it is a complete because if you look at it's like a timeline. You add always stuff to your research profile. It's a much more iterative approach to science. Absolutely, that absolutely. You're advocating. Yes, totally. And this is where I see the big advantage that you don't have to, if you look at articles, 30% of all articles is a rehash of things which you wrote before. If you read my articles, which I published, they have basically all the same introduction. So, and my professor always told me, ah, change it a little bit, right? It cannot be always the same, but it's the same. Um, but you have to change it. So you're wasting a lot of time on those sort of things. Um, and, if, um, and now we are building you know, a network where you just publish the, what you have done new, what you have published new, what have you generated new. So what's the evidence that it's working? The evidence is that, first of all, we're growing as fast as we haven't grown before. Like We're growing extremely fast in users and how much data is getting uploaded. Plus, we have tons of scientific breakthroughs happened because ResearchGate exists. Like, Give some examples. One example, um, there was a Nigerian scientist um, who, who had a baby which died, and he didn't know why. So we went to ResearchGate and said, hey, I have this problem. My baby died, and I cannot analyze the blood samples. And I said, someone from Italy said, yes, send me the blood samples to Italy. I can look at those. So he sent the blood samples from Nigeria to Italy, who then collaborated with someone uh, in the US together to look at these blood samples. And what they found out was that they found a new type of yeast, which previously only infected plants, but now mutated and also infects human beings. And this result was then published and on ResearchGate and was shared all the data on ResearchGate. And from this, a collaboration started. If ResearchGate would not have existed, those two people wouldn't have talked. And he could not have sent the samples to this guy in, in Italy. And yeah, we have this is one example and from life science. We have tons of other in, in, in physics, social science, math. Wherever. So is it your belief that this whole traditional scientific publishing infrastructure is going to eventually just go away and we're going to go to this more iterative online collaborative approach that you're advocating? Yes, I think so. I think the publishing as it was working uh, decades ago, um, it was for distribution, for quality control and the reputation. Uh, distribution nowadays ResearchGate distributes it better, or other platforms can distribute it better than more efficiently. More anyway. efficiently, yes, to the right people um, in real time, etc. Um, the the quality control, I think, quality control is not done by two people looking at a paper. It should be done by a network of people in real time, as you can do it in open source. It's a very good example if you write code and you upload it to GitHub, and you do another project and you upload it, you always can see the history, how good his code was before. So you can make up your mind. And I, I envision something similar, calling it open science in that space. So I think that also will, is not the main thing, the main differentiator of a publisher. So I think the magazines, the scientific magazines, have to find something where they can add value. With this, what they're doing right now, I think they don't add any value anymore. So what is the primary product development challenge that you're facing? Is it getting the right systems of discovery and interaction sort of systematized? How do you think about that? I think the, the biggest challenge is, uh, right now for us, is also scaling up everything, because it scales up and we have technically have to just, the number of stuff is getting uploaded is just growing very quickly. But I think discovery is a very big topic. Uh, okay, we are good in uh, managing the identities of scientists, and they're managing this on, on their own, and uploading the data, etc. But how do you discover now the right content? This is well, how do people know which things they should spend exactly, their time exactly. reviewing? And because obviously, absolutely. the quantity is, is unmanageable. I, absolutely. And I think the point here, again, is that we have to make science more digestible in smaller pieces, and not like in these big pieces you do it like for a couple of years, and then you publish your first article. It has to just to change how we do science. Um, but I think um, this is one challenge. The second challenge, I think, is 
really like at one point to open up ResearchGate and enable, just imagine a perfect world where you have all the data in, of science into, in one network and you open this up and you enable other people to look through this data and to make their conclusions. For example, you have all the data around multiple sclerosis, all the data around Alzheimer's, and all the data around Parkinson. I think if you have a nice algorithm who could go through all these different things, and gen DNA data, protein data, publications, what did people say about these things? I think we will find things, and we have breakthroughs, which we couldn't have if we don't have this holistic view. Um, and I think enabling outsiders at one point, and that's a big challenge, um, to look into the data and help us to build algorithms to go through all the scientific data of this world and helping us to make these breakthroughs quicker and more efficient, I think that's a, that's you a big You mean algorithms for search and, 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 and management, but, but you also even go... Also, one step, yes. What's the next step? Just articulate the, another, the second. So not even search and management, rather um, understanding the data. So going very deep on the data level and understanding, looking at... DNA uh, sequences and trying to understand which spot of the DNA potentially could be a target for a therapy. So you think that ResearchGate ends up not just being a social network for scientists or LinkedIn for scientists, which is pertinent since Matt Kohler works at LinkedIn and he's your founding you know, investor, but, but that you could actually create algorithms that speed up the process of scientific work yes. that you would host and people would take advantage of on your service. Yep. So, you know, it's very unusual for Bill Gates to lead a Series C in a startup. I mean, I'm sure it's happened before, but not frequently. What was it about what you're doing that got him so excited that he would do that? Uh, I cannot speak for him, but it was definitely I'm not... I'm sure you've asked. It was definitely not the MacBook which I brought to the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> I will never forget that moment. I was opening my laptop back. I'm sure he's used to it at this point. Saying, oh, yeah. damn, I have a MacBook. And then after, <laughs> and after a couple of slides, he started uh, doing this on my screen. And I said, wait, wait, uh, Bill, that's a Mac. Ah, it's just a Mac, you're right. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, but okay, back to the question. Go that's, yeah, back to the question. Um, again, I cannot speak for him, but if you look at what he's doing and what he's working on, eradicating polio, eradicating all the different diseases we have worldwide, and really looking at those on a more global level, I think it fits perfectly to that what we're trying to do. Um, I think we just are very like, can help us, uh, we make science more open and getting the data, which then again also helps him to say, okay, polio, uh, tuberculosis, malaria, how can we efficiently w you know, fight against these diseases? So the bottom line, and, and I know you are excited about this, so I just want you to articulate it for the audience, is that the pace of scientific discovery is truly going to accelerate because of yep. a system like this. Yes. Talk about that. I mean, that's, that's clearly what Gates, among others, yes. has realized in looking at what you're doing. Yeah. So on different levels, right? So first of all, you're not doing experiments which other people already have done. So you save time here. You're connecting dots from different disciplines with each other. So, you know, a, a statistician with a medical uh, doctor and a PhD in molecular biology, they couldn't have connected, not, like if you want to connect them now, it's almost impossible if you don't have a network like this. So really this interdisciplinary research, which then you know, increases the efficiency by basically making data available to everyone um, in the system and help everyone to really work with this. And I think that's something which will accelerate scientific progress significantly in the next year, just by the fact that those people are talking in the same network. Um, we didn't really get too much time to talk about the German-U.S. comparison, but you did, you kind of are viewed in, in Germany as, in a somewhat special light. Now, Chancellor Merkel came to visit you. I mean, so Germany has embraced you even though you kind of needed U.S. mindset to get going, right? Yeah. Um, I think that's something in Germany we still have to learn a lot. It's about entrepreneurship um, and how we encourage students to be entrepreneurs, right? I think that's something... It's I, not it's, bird shit. No, definitely not. It's, it's, it's not working in, in Germany, right? I, I, I'm especially, if you look where the entrepreneurs are coming from. In the U.S., the entrepreneurs come the, from the big companies, from the industry itself. So they understand the industry and say, okay, I want to change this industry because I think I have a better solution. In Germany, you, you see quite often people who have a business degree, uh, MBA, um, and say, okay, I want to do something. I want to be an entrepreneur. Yes, yeah. exactly. I'm deciding being an entrepreneur, right? I never wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to be a professor. I wanted to do research. Um, this is I also how I see ResearchGate. It's for me a research project, even if it's a company, but I see it as a project. I want to achieve something. So the whole uh, mentality, how we treat entrepreneurship has to change in Germany. Um, and 
I think, but we cannot change it if we're not there. And this is why I'm there in Germany. Um, and also people, when Matt invested, he said to me, okay, if you go to Berlin, you have to become the coolest startup in Germany. I said, yes, that's not a problem. We get, we, we're getting there. You know. <laughs> We, have, we are now, I think, the coolest, one of the most coolest startups in Germany. Um, but the interesting thing is that, you know, Germans, this is what people told me, if you want to build something like this in Germany, it's not so easy. But I think it's easy, you just have to create um, some sort of a connection to your employees and give them the feeling that they are partners. And I think this is something, the whole culture in companies is something we, in Germany, still have to work a lot on. And um, I think this is something where we have been very good at to engage everyone and really create this dedication to the product and what we are trying to achieve. It's a very impressive story. Do we, I don't know where Steffi is, but do we have time for a question or two? I'm not even sure of the answer to that, but yes? Okay, uh, who, anybody have a comment, question? Okay, right here. Can we, do we have any mics or just shout it out? How do you deal with the different languages that your scientists all speak? It's in our network or yeah. in, right now it's all in English, uh, but at one point we're going to think about how to do with it. But it's also a problem, especially a lot of knowledge is, uh, is imprisoned in languages, right? In Chinese, in Russian, and a lot of scientific knowledge. I think that's also a very important topic to tackle in the future, but I don't have a solution for that right now. But you, you will eventually. You we think. will definitely yeah. work on that. Okay, that was an easy one. How about one more? No, Back here. This was not easy. <laughs> Go ahead. Just shout it out. Yes. Yes, we just recently uh, launched our own research gate format because one problem in data is if it's not unified, if it's not the same format, it's pretty hard to analyze. So we launched our own research gate format, which starts to, in our opinion, has to replace the PDF as the format of showing information. But this research gate format, which we launched a couple of months ago, is going to be a format for any kind of type of data. And then we can also analyze easier. Yes, that's also something we're looking at. Um, haven't thought about that yet, but yeah, maybe. Yes, okay. <laughs> it's kind of, I'm just <laughs> now I know why you're talking I, I about it. I think we have to wrap, but I'm just thinking about an analogy. In a way, what you're trying to be is a combination of the Google and this is maybe a less exact, the tech shop of scientific research all at once, right? So you want scientific research to be inside ResearchGate in effect. And then to, to both for discovery, but also even for, for the, the research taking place yeah. inside that in order to accelerate the process of progress, yes. which I love. And Fantastic. you are doing really cool stuff. So congrats and thank you for kicking off DLD. Thank you so Wonderful much. Wonderful to have thank you. Thank you for Thanks. Thanks. After you. <laughs>